Good morning, viewers, and very warm welcome to the 22nd episode of the Meet the Media Veteran series. So, as promised on last Saturday, we are again back on this Saturday now. So, today in the episode, we have someone who is not only an actor but also is one of the most sought-after casting director of Hollywood. He loves casting and giving actors job. Giving back is a truly rewarding experience for him. Before presenting his detailed introduction. May I first welcome the casting director of Oscar-winning film Green Book, Mr. Thomas Sullivan, on the show. How's it going, everybody? Uh, can everyone? I don't know. Can everyone hear me? You think? Very warm welcome to the show, Thomas. It's such an honor having you on the show today. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy to happy to to be here and, and share my knowledge with everyone. You know, I got many years of it. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sullivan. Uh, so before we formally, you know, uh, request Mr. Thomas to begin his talks, uh, let me present his detailed introduction to the viewers. Uh, Thomas Sullivan is a casting director based in Los Angeles, California, known for his work in films and television. Thomas began his casting career over 12 years ago. He started out as an actor, but fell in love with the casting when he got a chance to volunteer for Rick Montgomery. After his first day working with the actors, he has never looked back. His first casting job was an ESPY commercial starring Justin Timberlake. Since then, he has worked on several features such as Three Stooges, Hall Pass, Priest, Dumb and Dumber 2, and the Oscar winner Green Book. In addition, he has worked with some of the most successful directors such as Lane Shafter Bishop, Jody Hill, Scott Stewart, and the Peter and Bobby Fairley. He also recently won RTO's award for his casting on Green Book. In last years, Thomas has cast seven features that have all aired on Lifetime and other various networks. Thomas has studied in the Texas Technical University. It is such an honor having Thomas on the show today. So may I request Thomas to kindly deliver his talk on casting for film and television. Thank you so much, Thomas, for joining us today. Oh uh, yeah, th thanks. I appreciate being here. Yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been quite a journey. So uh, I'm not sure how many people that that are listening or that you know that are listening that are actors here, but I I, I know the whole system. So because I used to do it way back in the day before I got into casting. So I know the whole the the whole I guess you could say uh, struggle uh, <laughs> because I went through it all. Uh, but yeah, it, casting is, um, it's, it's an interesting beast. If whoever, whatever field you're trying to get into in the entertainment business, because that was my goal, um, you know, moving out here 20 years ago that I wanted to, I wanted to make movies. I didn't know, I didn't, you know, I wanted to be in the movies. I wanted to make movies. I wanted, I just wanted to be a part of it because I loved the entertainment aspect of it. So coming out here, not knowing anyone in California, not the smartest choice. I'll, I'll be if you move out here and not know anyone, it's it's going to take you a little longer to to move up the chain because you, you should have like a mentor or somebody to help guide you. I didn't have that. I had to like learn the hard way, take the the, the path of the most resistance in a way. But uh, but you know, getting into casting, it really gave me a, a shot to see like how everything really works. So and I'm and I'm as I'm almost fifteen years now doing casting, and um, it's been a, such a rewarding experience. I mean to to mentor people to try to get in and break in and have a career and do what they love to do because at the end of the day all we want to do is is do what we love right i mean i think it's like gives us purpose and and uh, a way to like feel like we succeeded in life i mean that's for, like at least for me it's it feels like when every movie i cast is like oh it's another opportunity to give more actors jobs and, and let them go on their purpose uh but if, if there's people in there that are directors or that want to produce i mean those are whole, I mean, we're all kind of a family here. It's all kind of uh, uh, a mixed bag. We all need each other. So, you know, the past might be a little different, but the end result is usually the same um, as far as the work ethic and, and how you approach things and how you do deals. And it, it all comes into one lump sum. But uh, but I'm more interested in taking questions because I love to know like what you guys want to learn from me because I have a lot of knowledge in this brain. So. If there's any questions that you guys want that I can help answer to, to help you like strive to succeed in this business, because obviously everyone that's that's listening to this or listening to me is uh, wants to get in the entertainment business or is working in the entertainment business and just wants to get to that next level or that next step. 
So, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open the floor to, to whoever who wants to ask and uh, happy to, to share my knowledge. Uh, so actually audience have just joined Thomas. Uh, may I request you to first kindly sort of, you know, you can share your journey to the uh, casting industry, the kind of challenges you face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, that oh, yeah. be so that, you know, audience slowly join in and then we can open for the question answer maybe after 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So, yeah. you can so, share your journey to the casting industry and your issues and challenges you face during your history. Oh, for sure. Okay. Well, yeah. So like when, when, when I started like back when I started, I was an actor, um, you know, back then there wasn't like a breakdown. I mean, there was, but it wasn't like it is now. It was more of a, yeah, a, an email you got and you saw all the roles and you would have to drive to all the casting offices and drop off your headshot and, and hopefully they call you and and the resumes and headshots were black and white back then and now they're in color so the whole system was a little different but it was still the same grind so you know i every day I would get up i'd go to work uh, i had a I had a gas company job and i and i would read meters and then from there i'd at the end of the day for I, it was like a half day after that work i'd meet up with a buddy of mine and we'd go and we'd go to all the casting offices and we'd drop off headshots. And I mean, it was a grind. I mean, we did that. I did that for, whew, I think seven years, just every day, just, you know, trying to make, doing workshops. Workshops were a big thing back then, back in um, 2000, 2001. I mean, early 2000s workshops were really, it was a way to get, I mean, that's how I got into casting um, was, was through a workshop ironically. So it's kind of funny. I was like, Hey, you want to be a reader? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then it just transitioned into to my next my next career, uh, but it was it was funny because when you when you go through these these long journeys, you kind of kind of deviate from things. But you, you know, for seven years of dropping and, and then going to workshops and meeting all the casting directors and trying to get in the, the that 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 next part, that co star, you know, just get in that room. Um, you know, I, I luckily be, got behind the scenes to look to be a reader and that's what I did and I did it for oh man I did it for probably a year so the the challenges of that is like you know you go in and when you when you're a reader uh it's a little different because you know when you're doing drops you're on your own schedule you you go to wherever offices that need that part but when you're reading you know from working a job and going to be a reader it was like you're in you're in the room with reading all these actors like eight hours a day so it's, you know, you start from 10 in the morning and you go to like five or six. Sometimes you go to nine. Some, some days I'd be there from 10 in the morning to 9 p.m. because it was just such a long session. And, uh, and but I really learned a lot as far as like, oh, man, look at all these choices these actors are making. This is incredible. I would have never thought that. I mean, by far, like and I did all the acting classes and I did all the things that you needed to do. The best thing that I learned was if you get in the room as a reader you can see so many aspects and choices and you're working for hours on end every day versus you go into an acting class, you know, you maybe work an hour or two, maybe you get it, maybe you sit there in class for two hours and then you get up to do your scene and then you're done and you really only perform for like 10 to 15 minutes. That's, I mean, you can't really grow that way, but what you can grow is like if you're reading with an actor, many actors, um, it's, you, you just get, you just start getting good because you're just constant. It's like playing the piano. You know, you play the piano, you play it 10 minutes or you play it six hours a day. Where do you think you're going to grow? Like who's going to be more skilled, right? It's going to be the person that's practicing six hours, eight hours a day. So you would think though, that me being a reader, I'd be like, I'd be the best actor ever. But I, I ended up falling in love by working behind the scenes than uh than being in front of the camera so yeah doing that doing those journeys like being the reader and then like going up the chain like the challenges of, of like moving up from being a reader to a technical guide to the camera operator to being an assistant to then being an associate and then being my own casting director like there's all these hurdles it's just like an actor it's like oh co-star guest star recurring series regular you know move you know so you got all these it's kind of the same thing you're trying to move up the chain and and it goes at different paces for different people. For me, I kind of skipped. I, I was a technical guy, so I was really good with the, with, with uh, cameras and uploading auditions. And then when I started getting into casting, that was one of the things that was really getting more prevalent: is getting links done and uploaded. Before it was VHS tapes, and you would you you would film it and then record it on a DVD tape, and then you would make that DVD tape into a DVD. I mean, it was a whole system. It was old, not not like it is now, where it's really easy. So because you know, I came from like the '90s. That's what you did. So it was like, oh, I can do that stuff. So 
then that got me to the assistant and then it was all paperwork and uh and mostly like going through submissions and you know seeing who's right and then associate and then you're doing contracts so it's like you, each step you're doing something a little different uh but you got to focus on like you know what your strong suit like what your skill set is and, and mine was like more technical than it was the paperwork and the and the letters and all that the i mean i like to have other people do that for me and i like to pick good talent and and put them in a movie and that's then that and me being a cast director allows me to do that i don't have to like go through the because normally you would be an assistant for years and then an associate for years and then you'd be a cast and director for years um and then that's when you and then you probably branch off that to become a producer most cast and directors they start producing after a certain point because you know they have all these relationships and they use them and, and producing is your relationships. It's like, oh, I'm buddy, I'm I'm friends with Vigo. Okay, he can be in a movie. I'm a producer. It's like, you know, it can it can be that easy, but it's also so so difficult because to get to that part where you can say that, you'd have to put so many years in and get those relationships built on a solid foundation. So the it, you know challenges on that of coming in and out of of all these things. It's like the work. It's like it's constant. It's you know in casting, you don't. There's no like nine to five. I mean, you're on call all the time. When I was on it, when I was doing that TV show, and I, I did a TV show on Fox, and uh, and it was like I was in the office at eight a.m. and I didn't leave till sometimes two or three in the morning, just because you, there was just so much work to be done, so many emails, so many auditions, so many contracts. There was just so much to do, and you would think like, wow, how could it be take that long? It just it just somehow did. I'd be sitting in there just in the office. It's like three or two of the morning. I'm like, I gotta get home. I gotta get some sleep because I'd be back at eight a.m. the next day. But uh, but it's 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 kind of like a rush. It's like oh man, there's a, there, you know we're we're making a we're making a TV show. It's it's kind of cool because it's like you're in the beginning stages, about to give birth to like a a cool show. Uh, so that was that that's interesting. Uh, but the you know challenges is time factor too is making making sure that you're picking the right people because after all, it is art, right? And so casting is art. So my if I think somebody's good. There are probably people that don't think that person's good just because whatever they just don't relate to that actor. Um, so it's 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 a tricky situation. Like I might think somebody's good, and I show it to the director, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling that person." And then I'm like, "Oh no, I'm I'm way off base. Like, how do I how do I get on the same sync with with the director? Because that's a, your job as a casting director is you want to make your director happy. So I always, that's my that's my number one goal is. is I want my director happy. You know, they're they're the ones that usually hire casting directors. When you get a good director under your belt, you, you're set for life. I mean, they're going to be working constantly. They're always going to hire you because they trust you. They trust your taste. They trust how you work. And it's 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 a relation. It's a relationship basis. I mean, this business is all about relationships. But it's it's that the, the biggest challenge comes from, you know, hopefully picking the right talent for the project, whatever project it is, a TV show, commercial, movie. You just, you want to make sure that you're picking the right talent. And it, it's, it's a crapshoot. I mean, it, you don't want it to be a crapshoot, but you don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's art. So you don't know how it's going to turn out. You know, you hopefully it turns out brilliant. And, and that's all you can go for, but you can just put your best foot forward and not be fearful of, oh man, if I, hopefully they like it, hopefully they don't. It's just, you just got to be confident in what you're, you're presenting. But it is challenging, though, you know, because not everybody's always on the same page with with talent. I mean, there's always going to be people that are like, eh, I just don't think they're good, you know, and you're like, oh, but they have the credits and they're, you know, they, they can get there or, you know, fighting for those talents that you really want to succeed. It can be a challenge. You know, there are a lot of actors that I know uh, very well and I know they're good. And, it, it, you know, to get them in a movie that I'm doing, it's like sometimes the producers don't see it or the director doesn't see it. It's like, I don't, I don't see it. They're not, they're not right. And I'm like, they are though. I know these, these people, they can perform. So it's convincing them and, and, you know, showing them that this person's really good. And then, and then you're betting on that person. So they better deliver when they come on set. So th that's, that's another set of challenges. I mean, there's all these sorts of, and then, you know, scheduling, like, you know, the, before this, this COVID, uh, hit i was i had a movie that was filming and uh it got shut down you know um lane who did a talk here she was doing a movie that i cast i cast all of her films and and uh, you know they had three days to go and you know so that that's a challenge i mean now it's like we gotta i i, I gotta find get these people all together again and get them back on set and uh so it's the, you know those there, there's always like things that come in your 
your lane that you don't you don't you're not prepared for. It's like, oh man, now what? But you you, you have to somehow make it work and make it make it flow to where the job gets done and um, and you get hired again. You know, you, everybody wants to get hired again. Everybody wants to to keep working. I mean, at least, at least I do. I mean, I don't I don't really want to. I don't plan on like quitting. Like it's, I get a thrill out of it. Every job I do, it's like it's a whole new adventure. So. It is. It's. It's. It, as far it, as acting, it's like that's the same thing. As far as challenging that way, it's like you just got to keep staying busy and keep working and keep. And now is a great time because so many people are making money and they don't do anything but post videos of dumb stuff. Like it's. It's crazy. Like I mean, I man, if I would have grew up in that time, that was past my time. But man, I mean, geez, some of the people that, that just make all the. I mean, this so now is a plethora of, of just opportunity. You put something out on the web on YouTube or wherever. Um, and if you, if it hits it, you know, you, you've curved, you've made that curve. You don't have to like go through all these challenges. Now you're, you're in and people are talking about you and then you can just take that snowball and go forward. So there's a lot of opportunities out there that weren't there 10 years ago. Um, so th those, if, if they're, you know, the actors that are there, that that's, that's a definitely a good starting point. If you don't have any credits or if you don't know where to start, I mean, that's a, that's a, excellent way to just like get your creativity out there but you got to be realistic too because remember you know if you if you if you come out to la if you if anybody plans to move out to la it's the triple a game it's like you know the nfl it's the it's the it's a major league so you you got to be better than everyone else i mean in some aspect of whatever you're doing you have to be one of the best because it is such just a stiff it's it's a lot. It's hard. It's a stiff competition, and there's no better way to experience that than being be like being a reader. Like, uh, wow, I saw so many people that were so good, and, it, and me, I was like, man, I'm not near as good as these people. I could just, I just knew it. Like these people, I'd been training all their lives. They just had something I didn't, um, which is, you know, it was hard for me to accept that. But when I did, it was like it was so freeing because my, ta you know, my talents lied. They were elsewhere. They were in casting, which I'm so grateful for because I'm still in the business. You know, I'm making movies, just not in the capacity that I originally thought. But I think it's even better because like everybody that every movie I put together, it's like they're there because of me. That's just, like literally my movie. If it wasn't me on the movie, it'd be a whole different people. There wouldn't be the same people. It'd be different actors. So it's, it's really cool to, to have that staple. You know, to have every movie I've done, it's like that's 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 going to live on forever. You know, as long as there's the movies are still you know in existence, like that's that's my those are my picks. So it's a, it's kind of interesting. Like that's one of the the out of all the challenges that happen, it's like that's at the end of the day, it's like that's what you're 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 building like a legacy in a way of of your stamp of just you know being like ingrained into to movie history. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. You're kind of so somewhat immortal. It's it's interesting. It really is. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas, for such a scintillating talk and sharing your you know, first-hand experience about the you know casting for cinema and television. Uh, it's really wonderful uh, listening to you on this topic today. And uh, I, I can see this iconic frame of yours, uh, you know, live now. The Thomas is sitting in the foreground, and there is a you know poster of iconic film in your background, Green Book, which is an Oscar-winning film. And you did casting of this, you know, wonderful cult film. Uh, we can see Mahershala Ali also in the background. Yeah. Uh, he won two Oscars, you know, for the most support, supporting actors. And Green Book was a, such a fascinating film, you know. I, I think this is one of the uh, best uh, creative work you have done uh, in your career. Green Book, you know, all of us in this part of the world also, we appreciate a lot. So, uh, you know, the, the questions have started pouring now. So first question is uh, from Mr. C.G. Srigua. Uh, Mr. C.G. Srigua is a, uh, you know, a film graduate from a very famous institute, uh, Film Institute of India. Uh, okay. He's a filmmaker and as an editor also. So he has a very important question. He says, is it possible for a uh, non-actor to take up the role of the casting director? How much knowledge of acting, scripting and film direction, also camera work, should the person have? Well, I mean, it's if, so if, if, if you just want to like, so it, there is a skill set to it. So if you're a film, if you're, you know, working on a film and you're doing a film and you're like, well, I think this person's good. I want to put him in. A, I want to put him in a movie like there's other. It's not that simple because, you know, there's there's a system that, that you know, can, there's a reason why we exist, because when you pick actors that are good, you want the best actors in your film. Right. So if you pick a random person like I know this person, they're good. That 
there's so many cans of worms that can open up when they're not like they don't come through a proper channel. Like, you know, there's that's why there's agents and managers and lawyers and all these people that we deal with uh, to get because it, it's a vetting process. Right. So it's like you, you don't you don't know, like we as casting directors know and know actors credits, know their past history, you know, know what they're going to bring to the set. Cause some people, you know, some, some, you know, you want, you don't want to get someone on set and they don't show up one day. What do you do? Right. I mean, or, or, or they're, 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 they're high drama, you know, and they just, you can't get them, you can't get them on set on time they, or they drink or the, there's so many other things that, 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 that are out of your control and we limit that. So, it, and we, we pick the best people for it. So if you're a filmmaker and you're, and you're making a movie, and it's like, well, I can cast it myself. You know, I, I know a lot of good actors that, that can do it. Well, you're opening your, yourself up for like a lot of uh, things that could go wrong. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So you say you, you, you have a movie and you have a bunch of friends and you're like, they're all going to be in the movie. Right. And there's nobody that's that's it, it's just like a free for all. OK, yeah, you'll be. In, yeah, great. You, you, you'll come in it, too. Well, you got all the sets, you got the cameras, everything. And one actor doesn't show up. What do you do? You know, you don't have, you can't shoot. So then there's that day is wiped out. And what if the actor doesn't want to come? I say, yeah, I don't care about it anymore. I'm, I'm done. And then he leaves. So then what do you do? You have no film. So like having like a casting director, you, you have someone to go to if something goes wrong on set. So if, if the actor isn't, is, is misbehaving or doesn't show up or there's whatever random occurrence happens, you know, you got someone that, that that's like, okay, well, I'll take care of it. We'll get it. We'll get it. The production will still go on. You know, you have someone that it keeps going, whether if you just did it yourself, you, anything could go wrong. Now, again, on the flip side of the coin, everything could go right. But I mean, how much money are you putting into the film and your time and effort? Do you risk it? Do you want to risk that? Um, and if it goes right, great. But then the next one might not go right. Uh, it, it's, it, there's there's a lot of things that could go wrong without. And not only that, it's like you pick an actor you think is good. And what happens if they get on set and they're not that good? What happens if they're just, they're just not good? You know, most good actors that are really good, that really elevate a film, they have representation. They have people that they go that that that, that take care of them. They garner their career. You know, it's very rare that you have magnificent actors that are just top of their game, that are just the best and don't have anybody repping them. It's very there are people out there. It's a very small number, though. It's a very small number, um, at least in L.A. I don't I don't know about anywhere else, but in L.A., that's how it is. So. Um, but you also, you also, a cast director also is like, it puts the pieces in. So they're the, they're the person that's like, this person's going to be great in this. Like we see things that directors and producers don't see. So, you know, like Vigo and Mahershala, like, they, you know, you don't see, like they were brilliant, but could you see it though? We could, but the producers and directors, you know, sometimes they see it, sometimes they don't. You know, their brain power is focused on making a great film. Producers, their brain power is focused on getting the money, right? So, you you know, you, you only you have only a certain amount of brain energy per day to focus on things. So if you if you focus on the cast and the money and the directing, you're going to you're going to fall short on one of those areas. You just are. You're just you know, no one's a supercomputer. You, we're just we're, we all we all have a limit. So and that's a lot of stuff to, to process. I mean, dealing with contracts and actors and getting people on set and making sure they're paid and you don't get sued and all that stuff. I mean, it's not it's not fun. And I, I don't know one director or producer that wants to deal with it. It's 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 a it's a pain. you got to go through SAG. No director wants to deal with SAG. If that's if you're shooting a SAG film, if you're not shooting a non-union, if you're shooting a non-union movie, total different rules. So there's a lot of other things that come into that play in where it's just not as easy as like, yeah, I'll cast it myself and put whoever I want my buddies in it. I mean, it, they're usually not that great. You, 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 you it, there, there's a reason why this is all set up the way it is because it works. It makes, you know, it, it's, it's how it's done. Great. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Shri Gua, your question is well answered. If you have some more questions, supplementary questions, you can again, write those questions. Uh, 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 Mr. Musarath, uh, he says, good morning to you, Thomas. And uh, he says, it's a wonderful opportunity to hear you and see you. And another friend, uh, Hitra, he says, welcome. And then we have a question from uh, Lane Chapter Bishop from USA. Uh, she says, hi, Tom, uh, can you talk about the mistakes that actor make at auditions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lane, she, she's here. You're here, baby. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. I, I, I was hoping you would, you would come up and. 
I was hoping you would come up and, and, and see me. Oh, man, the mistakes actors make. Oh, geez. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, you know there's so many. I, you know, it's funny because I was just talking to Lane about this. It's kind of funny. Uh, there's, uh, I want to start off with what, you know, when they walk into the room, oh, I love this script. It's so great. It's so great. Oh, I just love, and they just go on and on and on and on and on and on. It's like, we just want you to come in, audition, and leave. Unless, unless there's a, like, unless, like, Lane's like, hey, let me give you a direction, you know, or just come in and do your work and leave. And, and don't be late. You know, if your call time is at 1220, you know, don't come in an hour late and be like, oh, and, and give excuses. We don't care. We don't care. You know, like make, get, get in and get out. That's that's one thing that's that you got to you got to really like get down, because if you go in there and you just talk and talk and you don't leave, it's awkward. It's just not, you know, and be prepared. Make sure you know the material. You know, you read the sides. You've read the script. If you have it, you know, be prepared. Don't be down. You know. You know, and make, you know, make a connection with the reader, you know, do your homework, you know, know, know what room you're going into. Don't, you know, don't come in and ask questions that that you could have gotten reading the script, you know, like don't. It's just like it, it doesn't it doesn't work. It, it makes you look unprofessional and it doesn't make us. It, may, and it also makes me look bad. It's like I called you in. And why are you doing this to me? You know, but that's, you know, I don't know all the actors. So that's how you bet. It's like they come in and then it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, what, what's another, what's another good mistake that, that, oh man, me and Lane have gotten some doozies uh, throughout the, throughout the many years. Um, you know, come in, when you come in, don't come in like a scrub. And a scrub is like somebody that's like, just hasn't like, like, don't come in raggedy and, and, and just not looking good. Like be come in, you know, read the, what the character is about, but don't come in like with broken, torn up tennis shoes, a baseball hat, you know, and like just a bunch of stuff on you and, and bring in lots of props and all that stuff. Don't do any of that stuff. Just, <laughs> we don't need all that stuff. You don't, we it just, it's simple. It's very simple. Auditioning is a simple process. It's not, it's not that complicated. You just be real, be connected and then leave. It's a very simple process. I mean, it, but it, it's hard when you don't know what to do. You do a lot of other ran, random mistakes and it's like, you don't, you don't need to be doing that. You know, it's, it's, it's not that serious. You know, you, you should have fun when you come into the room. It's a fun thing. It's your audition. It's basically like any other job when you come in and interview for a job, it should be fun. It should be relaxing. It should be something that, uh, that you know you enjoy doing, but then you leave and then you know go go about your day. It's not it's not something that you have to constantly keep thinking about, you know. So I'm sure Lane, you have uh, sort of injured the answer of uh, Thomas on this question. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he has sort of put up you know very nice details about the mistakes which actors do on the you know auditions. Uh, so Thomas, before I, I sort of begin with the students' question, you know we have a lot of general questions from you know film and television students while discussing this aspect of you know cinema, the casting for uh, film especially. So before I take up these questions, you know I think audience would like to listen. Uh, how did you sort of you know zeroed in uh, Mahershala Ali uh, for this Green Book? Uh, what was the journey of you know choosing such a brilliant actor for this particular role? Such an interesting role he has played. So what was the story? How did you sort of, you know, uh, if you could share this story about, you know, choosing Mahershala Ali for that particular role in Green Book, that would be interesting for the audience. OK, well, yeah. So um, so so Green Book took about three years for it to finally, you know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't just like they had the script and we went the same year. I mean, it, it was around my area, you know, for I say two and a half years. And um, we, we, you know, he. Mahershala just won for, for Moonlight, right? He, but he had, but this is before he won, you know, we had, I thought he was a brilliant actor. I was like, this guy's fantastic. And uh, when we got the script, you know, we, we were talking with Pete and we were talking with the producers and, and, you know, we're thinking about who can we get for the leads on this thing? You know, who, who's going to be the right fit. And, and Mahershala was the first one to sign on. So, uh, you know, we needed someone that was, that was very like, that had a scarred past and you could see it in their face. Yeah. And, and we, when we were talking like Mahershala, you know, Moonlight was, I, I think at the time Moonlight wasn't 
out yet. And somebody had seen a pre a screener of it, and it was yeah, no, it wasn't like big like it was, and, and this happened to blow up. But um, this was before that. So so he with oh, Herschel was great in this film, you know. And we were talking about his past credits and and all that. So he he was like one of the he was the he was the name that we we wanted to go to. So when we put we we said, well, let's put an offer. Let's see if he's available. And um, and that's how it really happened. It's like you go to the call the agent. And it's like we got a great script. Let him read it, and uh, if he likes it, we'd love to have him sign on. That's how with, with stars like that. It's like you give them the script; they like the script, they say yes, you know. And then the money's right, obviously. So, um, and it took, but it took a lot of negotiations. It's not like you give them the script and like, hey, I'm, I'm signed on, thanks, you know. No, it goes back in the lawyers, and that I'm not involved in. I don't, I don't have a law degree. I just like, I, I, I say, I get the script to them. They like it, great. And then I just move it to the lawyers, and they can negotiate the deal. But. Um, but that and that's how it happened. It was it, it wasn't really kind of um, there wasn't no special story behind it. He just re, he read it and he loved it and and we offered it to him and then he said yes. And then the next part was to see who's going to be the driver, who's going to be who's going to play um, the driver. And uh, and Vigo came to mind. And again, Vigo's a very content driven person. It's got to be about how good the script is. You know, he doesn't really care about money or big budget stuff. He just like it's a, it's a great script. He'll do it, and um, and that, and then like I don't know, six months later, or three or four months later, we went to Vigo, and then there was a that was another couple months of him reading it and back and forth and negotiations. Then he came on board, and then once he came on board, then we officially like it took a couple of months, and then we officially started casting the movie as far as all the other roles. So in the beginning stages, it's just like it's just phone calls, uh, back and forth, letters, uh, you know, contracts. And there's no really casting going on because the deals are still out and we're trying to get people attached. And and because when you get the actors, the big name actors attached, then the studio really finds out how much money they'll allocate for the film. The money will be there, but the bigger the name, the more money you're going to get for the film. So uh, when those two actors came on board, it was a no brainer for, for it to keep going. So and that's how it kind of happened. That was kind of the story. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so, uh, uh, Thomas, uh, you know, I have interacted, I keep on interacting, you know, a lot of cinema and television students. So, you know, normally, whenever I visit some film schools, you know, they remain, say, confusion about, you know, casting for cinema and television. How does this process actually flows, actually? Uh, there is a casting director, then we have a sort of director or producer of a film. So how does this process actually start? Film script is already written by maybe a script writer or maybe director himself. So is it like, you know, director first hand over the script to the casting director and then casting director reads the script and he decides, you know, which actors will fit in into a particular role. Is it like this way or is it other way actually? Oh, I mean, you know, there's there's no set way of how a movie gets made. So, I mean, I've been on a lot of films and they have all went differently. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, like, you know, I've been on films where they've had the star you know, the star was attached, but they didn't have a director. They didn't have a casting director. They didn't have anyone. So, it, you know, so sometimes directors come in late in the game um, and the actors are attached. The casting usually comes in uh, if it, it depends on the budget of the film. So it's like if it's a smaller budget, you know, casting comes in right right away. Um, you know, we, we got to get people for the film. If it's a big, big budget, like if it's, you know, 50 million plus, or 25 million, or even 15 million, 10 million. Um, the you, casting directors will come in, like in the beginning, to attach the the lead, or because the director isn't as important for depending on the budget of the film. The bigger the budget, the better the actor that needs to, to be attached, right? Directors um, come in either on or after a, an actor big name is attached, but it, it all varies though because every film is different. You know, if you take a smaller budget film, then directors usually already attached. It's already their film. You know, the casting's there, and then you just got to get people attached. Um, but it, it, it changes as budgets go, and depending on where it's shooting too. Like that, the location obviously changes as well too. Because if it's shooting somewhere out of the country, then there's different rules, and uh, and you know, casting could be like local, and then it could be you know, because when I did a thing in Canada. I did this a TV show called The Now for Quibi. It, I don't, it hasn't got released yet, but um, it you know we, we they had a Canadian casting director there, um, and I just and I did the local. I did like the LA hires. So there were two people in charge, 
Uh, one was for the locals, and I didn't know a lot of Canadian actors that could, you know, on a day to day basis for co stars. Because TV is a little different. TV is different from film, right? So, T uh, for TV, you have your whole system. You have your director, you have your casting director, you have your producers. It's already set to go, you know. So TV's usually just there. It's done. But movies pieces come in at different times. Um, so it, TV's much faster pace. So you know, a TV show will definitely have its team evolved, and the directors usually change for episode. So it's usually not the same director for every episode. Now some, you know, some TV shows director on every episode and they're also when maybe a writer too, but usually it's different directors on each episode, but it's a fast paced movie. It's a beast that keeps going and going and going. Um, but sometimes studios and there's other movies where studios will, will just approach the big name actors, um, you know, like Paramount or, or if Sony or Fox, they'll just call up, you know, Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise. And they say, Hey, we got a movie for you you know, read the script because they're buddies, they have friends. And they say, yeah, I like it. Let's do it. And then they, they're attached and then the casting comes on board and then the director comes on board. So there's that way too. So that actually happens as well. When the big honchos at the studios, you know, they have all those relationships. They can just call them personally, but I got a script, you know, you want to do it. And then, and they say, yeah. And then, and then the casting comes in and they, that's when the, the deal gets negotiated. So casting comes in and okay, they're attached. Okay, great. Let's, let's negotiate the deal. And then the lawyers go at it and then the money, you know, goes back and forth points and all that other stuff. Um, so it's, it's, there's really like no set way. I mean, it just depends on each project of how it all comes together. Um, and it's, it's never, it's never really, um, the same. It's all, there's always a little something, there's always a shade different of how it comes together. Um, but on all the film, you got to have a basis for, for, you know, an avenue of money. You know, some movies it's like, Oh, if we get a lead attached, if we get an actor attached, then we get the money that happens a lot out here. Um, and, uh, and casting of course is always on board on that, but then, you know, that's tricky because it, it, that's just a whole other can of worms uh, and a whole other aspect of it. But that's in a whole other talk too. <laughs> right, right. You know, this uh, uh, Shakespeare's character of Macbeth, uh, this has been portrayed on, on Silver Skin, you know, so many times, you know, Macbeth, uh, you, you, you sort of pick up, you know, cinema from the, any part of the world. You will find Macbeth in different forms on cinema screen. So, for example, if you get a project of so, uh, you know, there is a strong character of Macbeth in that uh, that script. So, Macbeth, uh, how would you choose, you know, a, a actor for for your casting uh, for the Macbeth, especially? So, would it be the like, you know, uh, uh, essence of the script, or the, you will uh, go with the director's briefing, or you will have your own interpretation, or would you watch, you know, some famous, uh, you know, uh, cinematic uh, narratives from all across the world before taking a decision? Of, of choosing a character of Macbeth uh, for your casting. Well, how 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 I would approach it would um, I would go through a list uh, that I would make personally, and I would think I would just pick actors I who I think are fantastic who would fit the role. So I would I would do it. I was I would, I would go through. And I was like, okay, this person's great. This person's great. This person's great. And then I would have a couple, two or three that would be my favorites. Like I think these person these, these actors would crush Macbeth. And then I would send that list to the director and producers and let them decipher it and see what, what what their thoughts are like who do who do they like for the role and, uh, and then we go back and forth you know um and and come to an agreement um but i'm always you know in the director's corner like whatever the director likes uh, you know like that, i'm there to you know make a great film with the director so they're they're the they're they're the boss in my mind so it's so that's how you normally do it. It's like, I, hopefully I pick a, a, a lot of great actors, which I always think I do. And uh, and they go through that list and they pick who they want for, for Macbeth. But then again, though, once they do, then it comes to back to, okay, let's see if these actors are available or, you know, but usually I already have their avails. If they're available, so now let's see if they respond to Macbeth and see if they'll want to do it. Um, but that is that is bar garnering if we're doing offers to the actor. Now, if they're reading for the role, then that's a whole other different thing. So if they're reading for the Macbeth, you know, it's it, you're fine. You know, you're good. So would it be a popular choice for you, like you know, maybe Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or some uh, some big big name, or would you sort of go for a new talent, you know, which might be a terrific talent? Um, I would. Uh, you know, it it just depends. I'd have to talk to the director and see wh where their heads at. Um, it, you know, do they 
are they looking for a big name or do they want somebody that's up and coming? It just depends because you have you have to you have those talks with with the director and producers like where they want to see where they want this to go. You know, if they're trying to sell tickets, they're going to need a star attached. So that's going to that's going to change the dynamic of getting a no name actor in that role. So if they're trying to sell tickets that guaranteed to make their money back, then you got to get a star name. Uh, but if not, then they, they're really looking for somebody that's up and coming that nobody really knows, then that's a whole other different, that's a whole other, that's a different list. Um, so it, it just depends on what, you know, where their mind's at and where they want to go with it. Um, usually though, what happens is you want to get the best name possible. So the, the, the actor with the most experience with the most name recognition usually helps. And then after that, everything else follows. Then you get those smaller roles or the up and coming, take those smaller roles. Um, just, it's, you know, financially, because it is a business after all, financially, it's a smarter way to go. Uh, so we have one more question from Mr. Srigwa. This this is a long question. I think he has two, three questions in his question. Uh, Obad, can you please put the question on his screen? Uh, Mr. Srigwa, he says, does the casting director contribute to the development of the character? Although character has already been written by the director previously. In other words, can the casting director reinterpret the character? Has it ever happened that you first rejected a, a particular actor for a role and selected somebody only to realize that the previous person was a better choice? I think very interesting question. Here. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I no, not really. I've never really had an actor, and I'm like, oh, I should have went with the other. Well, um, let me think. I mean, that's a good question. Let me just let me just go back through. I mean, uh, you know. I'll just go back to Elaine. If Elaine, you're still watching, I know there's different actors that, that that I have hired that I didn't know about. That if we could go back in time, we definitely would not hire those actors again. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess it has happened where you hire someone and they're just a nightmare. And wow, if we just would have went the other way, um, what a better experience. So sure, it definitely is it, it is has happened. Um, but I try to hopefully not let it happen as much. You just don't know. I mean, you know, actors are so they're, they're you know, some actors are very uh, just you don't know what you're getting. I mean, they work a lot, but you don't know what you're getting on that particular day or. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 you know, it's, it's kind of like you just have to hopefully prepare that it's it's not. But as far as development of the character, um, again, it's like I, I talk to the director and we, we talk about where they think the character is and who the person is. And uh, and I give the notes to the actors it's like, OK, this, you know, this character is cocky. Like, we'll give an example. This character is cocky. He's nice. But or for instance, I'll give you another lay an example because, you know, uh, we've done so many things together. Like, you know, when we were doing a killer, the guy that was the killer, you know, everybody that played it like really dark and like was angry. And it's like that never worked. You know, like he, he, it's like the, the character was crazy. He was he was a, he was a. He was a murderer, but he was crazy, but he didn't think he was crazy. He was a normal guy in his mind. So the actor needed to play it like a normal guy, like everything's cool. Like it's just not what I'm doing is I'm killing you. I'm kidnapping you. But hey, it's for your best. It's the best. It's best for you. I know it's better for you. You know, so it's kind of like it's played off that way. So the interpretation of that is, yeah, I mean, for sure. Like I definitely give guidance to actors um, it, when the agents ask questions or even if, even if they don't, when I send out an appointment, I'm like, Make sure you you know you don't play the anger. Play it real. Play it you know, play it like it's you you really um, you know you think you're doing the best for this for this for the for your, for this person. So so yeah, I mean it, whatever information I have, I definitely will interpret it if they're off on a on a on a bad course and they're not making the right decisions. Um, so yeah, did I answer that question? Uh, was there another part to that question? That was a long question. Uh, Obad, can you please put up the question again? Uh, so I think first part you already answered. Uh, okay. Then ever happened that you first rejected a particular actor for a role and selected somebody only to realize that the previous person was better than better choice. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, I answered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like you know you don't want those instances though where you're like, oh, I wish I would have picked that that actor. They're much better. You know, it's I don't I don't I never want that. So. Uh, I try to I try to minimize that as much as possible. But I will say, like, things happen for a reason. So, I mean, there are many times that, you know, you ca you wanted someone and it didn't work out and you got someone else and it it turned out fantastic. So I always I'll, I'm a true believer of like, you know, it happens. It's happened the way it's going to happen. You can't really, you know, it's the universe or whatever you want to whatever you want to believe in. It's like you you make the choices 
and you you know you just hope for the best uh, you know it's life life is very unpredictable in itself so you just you always just want to put the good energy out there and the hard work and and the you know i say the love just because you know it's like it, you, you always want that that good that good energy on set and uh, you hopefully it's just it's received and you you have that throughout your whole shoot you know that's that's the that's the agenda that's the goal here have you know make a movie and have fun i mean what what i you know, nobody's, it's like, you know, you could be roofing, you know what I mean? You could be doing construction. That would suck. You know, like I, I used to work, I used to do a blue collar job. It was terrible. It was terrible. Um, anyway. Yeah. Great. Uh, so Mrs. Rigua, he says, thank you. Uh, he said, you answered both the questions. And uh, now we have another question from Mr. Ravi Ranjan. He says, what is the difference between casting director and director? Very basic question. Normally students ask actually. Oh yeah. I mean, well, the casting director just gives the director choices on who they want to put in the film. I mean, you know, I, I wrangle the herd, as, as I say it. I wrangle the herd. So it's like you got a bunch of, uh, I don't want to say sheep because it's a it's a bad term, but you got a bunch of people and I got to thin it down. I got to thin out the, you know, I got I to gotta make, I got to pick the best possible people and show the director. So that's the difference. It's like, you know, the, the director makes the film. The director, you know, that that's their vision. And my job is to help that vision, is to help. I, I My job is to give the director the best pieces possible for her to put the puzzle together. That's my job. So those are the differences. You know, I don't put the puzzle together. I just give the pieces to the director. To, you know, so that's the difference. Like I'm giving the pieces to the to the director and they're making the puzzle. So that, it's, you know, it's a big difference. I mean, directors have a, a tough job. I mean, it's, I could, that's why I'm not a director. It's tough. It's like you got to. You got to make you got to make a story into reality, you know, and, I, and I'm I'm hopefully just, you know, giving the best choices for the reality that they can make to that. I'm sure Ravi Ranjan, you got your answer. Uh, we have another interesting question from Saurabh Goyal, what you were discussing uh, a few seconds before. How do you prefer casting for films, director driven or studio driven? Uh, what are the pros and cons of both based on your experiences? Um. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see. Uh, my my screen is probably more. Okay, how do you prefer kind of a director driven or studio? Oh well, I you know um here, let's see what are the pros and cons of okay well I like honestly I, it that's that's a good question I I love I just love casting um what do I what do I like better I mean I I like I just like working with great people. I, you know, studio, independent, it doesn't matter. I just want to, I want to work with good people that love what they do, that are in a good mindset and that are just nice to be around. You know, that's, that's, that's what I care about. Like whether it's a studio or an independent film, as long as they're cool and fun people, I like it. Like that, that's, that's the, now the stakes are different between a studio and an independent film because a studio you have more, there's more money involved. So they expect more from you, which is fine. That's cool. Like, great. I'm making more money too. Let's do it. You know? Uh, so it, but it, you know, it's, it depends on who's behind the film, who's producing, who's directing, you know, I've been fortunate that I've had worked with a lot of fantastic people. Um, so it's, it's, they're both great for me. I, I love working. And, um, and I love putting, I love making movies. I love making TV shows. I love working. <laughs> so, um, they're both, they're both great for me. I'm busy. Like, I just want to be busy and work with good people. I haven't, you know, have I had really, um, I did one movie a couple years ago. Um, it was this, this, this director, he was young, young guy. Um, and he really just didn't have a, a, a he didn't have a, a direction. He didn't really know what he was doing. And the producer was kind of directing it. And um, I mean, that was, I wouldn't say that that's a bad experience, but it was like, eh, I mean, it's not that, you know, you want, you, you want some sort of like co coherency here, you know? Um, but, it's, but most of it's all, it's, it's all been pretty, pretty fantastic. You I mean, knock on wood, hopefully it stays that way. You know, it's like, I, I just want to work with good people. I'm sure everyone's like that. You just want to work with good people. Um, and be grateful. You know, I want people, I want to be working with people that are grateful. It's, uh, cause what we do is it's a, it's a, it's a privilege. I think, you know, it's to, to have a career in, in this business. It's, 
it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So I'm, I'm just happy that, that I'm just, I'm still working. You know, I, I just want to keep working. You know, that's all I, I, like everyone, like everyone, we just want to keep making money and do what we love to do. So you are not only happy and you have given us green book actually. So, which is a sort of fascinating uh, narrative, uh, cinema students, intelligence students, they, they, they sort of, you know, love actually this film green book, the, the especially casting of this film is wonderful actually. And um, uh, everybody, you know, in I think uh, every part of the world, Mahershala Ali has been appreciated like anything, you know. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Cult yeah. Back to back two Oscars actually, and then then this film, this film was wonderful. Yeah, uh, thank you. yeah. I was, I, I didn't, you know, honestly, I didn't expect it to be as popular as it was. I really didn't. I thought it was just going to be another movie, and it was going to come and go. Uh, but it it turned out amazing i mean and that's the beauty part of cat you just don't know how things are going to turn out you know uh, i just thought it was going to be another drop in the bucket and it, did, it wasn't it was a big drop in a big ass bucket you know it was it was, it was pretty fantastic yeah it turned out phenomenal I, what is the, yeah thomas i think what is the success of casting director here lies you know uh did the actors like manshala ali which is obviously chosen by a casting director uh, with the yeah. consideration of a director one of these actors, these wonderful talents, you know, you put them in any 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 side of the frame, actually, whether they are in background or in foreground or at the right side of the frame, the left side of the frame, whether they are with, the, you know, any big star in a frame, whether it's a Brad Pitt or, you know, anybody else, they right. stood out in the frame, actually. They sort of, you know, with their body language, with, their, with, their, with the language, they speak for the character, they stood out because of their talent. And that is the success, you know, which sort of, you know, casting director carries in their life. You know, when you choose a character, when you choose an actor for a character, which really sort of, you know, live to a character and, and they, they, they really, you know, sort of, they act director or maybe, you know, a particular co-actor don't matter to them. They are just sort of, you know, with them, you know, playing the another character, but, you know, they sort of give the full justice to their character. That is the beauty of Mahesh Ali and the actors like him. There are many more actors, you know, like across the world. Sure. Now, uh, Ashwin Gambhir has another question. Uh, he says, uh, other than acting skills, what casting directors are looking in an actor? Can you share a experience, any experience when things not gone in the way as the director want? How things finally happen? Um, so like when, when, when we, is, is, is he asking like if an actor has been on set and, the, and they didn't, they didn't, it didn't go like how it's supposed to go. Is that what he means? Yes. I think uh, a selection has been made for a particular character okay. and then you go to the floor, maybe uh, things have not, you know, happened in, in desired way. Well, um, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, um, that really, I mean, as far as, I mean, there, there have been times, you know, like, we, we, you know, I'll use Lane again because um, that, you know, we, we, we hired people and, and, you know, it just they just weren't that fun to work with. But, you know, they weren't bad actors, per se. They just weren't, you know, good people, <laughs> um, you know. Um, but but as far as like acting and, and where they were, they were terrible. Um, fortunately, I haven't had that that. Um, experience but i will say this i've had other casting directors colleagues that have been like they've done tv shows and there's a table read and the actor comes in on the table read and they're not good and they get fired that on the table read and there's also i've, I've had other casting directors where a tv show has been shot and it's the first episode it's the pilot and the pilot like an actor just isn't that good and they get canned they get fired so um uh that does happen for sure. TV, I think, mostly more than 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 films. Films, it's really rare that you. I, I, it's it's not that common. I mean, I I know that in the eighties, Back to the Future, you know, uh, Michael J. Fox, he was a replacement for I think Eric, um, what's his name, Stoltz or Eric Stoltz. I think he was he was the the original Marty McFly, and they shot like a month or two. And he ended up, he just wasn't good. And they, they, they let him go and they hired Michael J. Fox. So, but it, it, for movies, I, I don't know if it's really, um, has happened that much. Um, uh, for me, thankfully, like I haven't had, you know, well, you know what? I take that back. I do take that back. There was one where this, this stunt guy, um, he was supposed to be filming 
a day and um, he booked another job and it's like, you know what? I'm not going to show up. I got another job. So he didn't come up, you know. So again, here's a moment where you want a cast director because, you know, this was Lane. And Lane called him up. What the hell is going on? I, this actor is not coming to set. What do I do? So I had to scramble, like, oh man. So I had to get, like, immediately get a replacement for this guy, you know. I had to, like, get that guy on set immediately. So we had to go through past auditions and I had to, like, okay, this guy's good. Let's get him on. So there's been that time and he only got fired because he didn't show up, you know. But as far as, like, being on set and they're like, oh, we, you just, you know. Um, it's not that I will say this though. There was, there had, I did a couple commercials cause I've done a lot of commercials that started in commercials. I did a lot of commercials and there was one commercial where, uh, it was a mascot. It was a Reebok commercial and the guy had to dunk. He, he was, he had to be in a mascot suit and he had to dunk and in the audition he could dunk, right? But he couldn't dunk in a mascot suit. So he got to set, they were filming and, um, the guy is action and he's running up and he tries to dunk and he couldn't get, he couldn't dunk the, the, the suit prevented him from dunking. So he, they fired him and they had to get, they had to get a new replacement. Thankfully there was a lot of people that could dunk and they just put a new seat on some random actor and he, that it was an extra. And uh, that guy got the commercial, you know, cause they, they got the real guy they hired couldn't dunk um, with the mascot suit on. So, um, so yeah, but I mean, it's it, it. You don't want that to happen really much at all. So that's hopefully, you know, I I that I never want that. That's like one of my biggest fears. It's like you, you know, you, you get it higher an actor, and they're just not good. I mean, I think about that all the time. Every project I do, I think about that. So you know, that's why you know, I you you have to vet and you read people, and you you know, they have agents, and you you have to do a whole sort of kind of where, what's their materials? What have they done? What, what they've been on set? Like there's all these other things that go into the background of it that hopefully prevent that, you know? I'm sure Ashwini, your question is well answered. Uh, we have another question from Saurabh Goyal. Uh, he says, do you see a change in how casting is done for the films now vis-a-vis -vis, say 15 years back? Do you see the studios and audience warming up to the idea of seeing newcomers play lead in big budget films? Um, okay. So, well, things have definitely changed from, uh, there's two parts to that. So the 15 years, yeah, things are definitely different now. I mean, it's all digital. I mean, you know, there's, it, you could see so many more people in such a short amount of time versus, um, back in the day where you only could see maybe 20 people a day. I can, I can put people on tape and, you know, get hundreds of people to, to, to tape for one role. Um, so it's definitely for an actor, it's good. Cause you, there's a lot more people at casting directors such as myself can see. Versus before, 15 years ago, you're lucky if you got in the door. I never got in the door. Doing drops, never, not once. It was, I, you know, may, oh, I had one audition, like, you know. But you just, if you weren't a name, didn't have credits, it was very unlikely you were getting a shot. But now, with digital age, you could see so many people so so rapidly. And now with the corona going down, you know, like, it mostly it's going to be, I think a lot of it's going to be online now, self-tapes. A lot of it's going to be self-tapes. It isn't going to be coming into the casting room. And, uh, and auditioning for the cast director, you'll have to do it, you know, and send it up to send it over to the cast director and they'll upload it to a link or you'll get a link that you have to upload it to one of the two. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, I think that's what, that's a different thing going forward, but you could, actors have a lot better shot now because, you know, you could, they can, people could see more people. So if you, and as far as a no name leading a big budget film, um, I don't know if that will ever happen, um, as much as I, you know, I'm trying to think when it – see, people if, – if there's an actor that's leading in a big-budget film and he's a no one, there's – I guarantee you they have a lot of credits. You just never saw any of their movies or their TV shows. Nobody puts – nobody um, – no studio invests in an actor that has no previous experience to lead a big-budget film. It just doesn't happen. They, they, they've got too much to lose. Um I mean, I'm sure there's odd cases. I don't know any of them. I'm trying to think if there's any any movie where it's like, oh, they're an unknown and they lit a big budget film. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, they've got credits somewhere. You know, they've got they've got they're not unknown. They're just unknown to the mass amount of people. Um, but they're they're known to the inner community of casting directors and producers and directors. They're just artsy actors. They're not they're not superstars. So somebody that has no credits in a big budget film. Uh, it, there's uh, it's a it, if it if the only way that would happen is if you're putting up the money if you got 50 million bucks in the bank hey i'm gonna make a 50 million dollar movie i'll put myself in it 
you're going to be the lead of the big budget foom. There you go, you know. But other than that, no way. It's just it's too much of a risk. They they need to, you know, they have the money to pay for talent. They're going to pay for talent. You know, you got to earn your bones in this business. I mean, you got to get the credits. You got to move up the chain. And again, unless you have a lot of money, you make your own rules. You know, money, you can do whatever you want. I mean, really, money gives you the freedom to do to to make up your own destiny. Um, and that's the one caveat of this business. I mean, you know, if you have a lot of money, you can do whatever you want. You can make as many films as you want. You can star in as many films as you want. If one of them hits, you guess what? The studios are going to want you, you know, so there's that exception. True that. I'm sure of your question is well answered, Saurabh. Uh, uh, Ravi Ranjan, thank you uh, for, for answering his question. And I think we have the last question of the day now uh, because we have already crossed one hour. Uh, last question is from Mr. Omar Azmi. He says, for a show like Dark on Netflix, okay. the cast is one of the most trivial things about this show. Three different people playing the same character from a different age with probably the most complex screenplay written for television. So where does the casting process start here? Well, that's a, I mean, that's a good question. Like, uh, well, you, you got to get, I mean, a, a, an actor that can play three different you know, characters and be believable and, and carry a show like that. You got to get someone that's just a, a dynamite actor and, and how you find those people, you, you know, you, you read them, I'm sure, or I'm sure they were, that was an offer, but you, you, you have materials, you have past work of all these actors, you know? So if you're, if, so if I was getting that show dark and they're like, okay, this actor has got to play three different roles. And uh, I don't know how the process went for that show, but I can assume, you know, that they got the script. It's like, okay, we need a great actor that can do three different characters um, very well and be believable. Then you just go through your list of the best actors out there that are available that could do that, you know, that could really play that. Or or you go and you call up agents and you're like, okay, what actor has done similar work to this that could that could portray this character? And you just do, you start digging in and doing research, you know? Now, sometimes if it's Netflix, they might've had a list like, hey, we would really love this actor to do it. You know, can we get this actor? And uh, and then you just go for that. And then, you know, you, you make an offer, they accept, and then the director works with them and gets them to the place where they need to be if they're not already there. So um, it's it's there's a lot of different angles to take it. But, I mean, you, what you do is you start with material. you got to go over material. What has this actor done? You know, what's how? Because an actor like that's got to be seasoned. You got to be good. You can't just be like a Joe Schmo and like, oh, I never, I never took a theater class. I'm an acting. No, it doesn't work like that. You, you're carrying a, a TV show, so you, you have to have the resume to back it up. And most people that that are that are successful, they've been doing it for 20, 30 years. They were kid actors, teenage. Act I mean, they've been in the business for a very long time. Just nobody's known about them. They don't, they have never had any roles that nobody they broke out on. You know, and when they do break out, then it's like, oh, they came from nowhere. No, they've been doing, they've been working a long time. It's just they finally hit. They got a movie that they finally hit. You know. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas. Before we close the show today, I would like to advise. I would like you to advise the you know young casting director who really wants to pursue this career. What kind of advice you would like to give them? You know, regarding like maybe maintaining the bank of the actor. How should they maintain their bank of actors? So maybe you know. How can how how they can search for the new actors, new talents actually? Oh, how how the, how the filmmakers can can like acquire yeah. new, new skills or new talent or new new actors? Well, yeah. I, you know, um, the the best part is is you, you go to go to acting classes, go to act, go to showcases, go to you know all these like I know here in the state, I don't know how it is in India, but here in like California. All the, the top colleges from all over the, the, the United States, they come to do a showcase. They do like a Juilliard, um, you know, um, New York Film Academy. They do, they, and they're all these up and coming young talents and they do these showcases and you get to know them. They perform for you, they do writing seminars and you get to learn, like, and I go to these things and you could pick out people like, oh, that person's gonna be good. That person's kind of a star. That person's gonna hit. You know, you could see it, you could see the, the, the 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 rawness of a good actor that's that's one place to start is doing showcases and and uh and going to places where there's like pl in plays going to see plays that's another place to, to spot out new talent um if you're looking for actors um and another thing is too is like you know if you like somebody's look you're like oh man that person's very interesting you go up and talk hey you're you are you an actor at all like i mean i know it's kind of cliche it's like you're trying to but but you you find out about them. Maybe they are an actor and you can say, Oh, have you done anything? You know, is there anything for me to see? 
Um, and then another, another way of doing it too is watch shows, watch a bunch of TV shows, watch a bunch of movies and pick, pick out people. Who is that person? Find out the credits there. You got INDB pro look that person up. You know, there's contact information there. So there's a lot of avenues of, of different ways you could, you could acquire like, you know, new actors to get in your, to get in your films. Um, Cause I mean, the internet's great. I mean, it's so easy to access people. So, you know, any, any movie you see, any TV show you see, if you like someone, you can look them up, get their contact information. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, I mean, it's ingenious actually, but the showcases are a good way to get young talent. I mean, really, you know, people that are talented, they're found that, you know, they're just out there, they're performing. So you just got to go out to these showcases and you got to go out to these uh, plays and you got to go out to, you know, events where people are performing that you can see like, oh man, that person's really great. Like we, you know, they'd be perfect for this role. You know, that's, that's, that's one way of doing it. And then the easiest way is to hire a casting director and let them do it for you, <laughs> you know, and you, and you worry about making a good film. I mean, you know, but if you don't, if you can't do that and you got to do it yourself, no, that's the way, that's what you do. And another thing too, is you could put an ad out, you know, like I know that here, you know, if you put an ad out in backstage West, it's, you know, looking for actors, please send headshot and resume to here. Normally it's just email, email me your headshot and resume. Cause, but back, you know, nobody uses mail anymore. You just email, email me your headshot and resume. So you could put an ad out and say, please include footage of your acting. So that's another thing too, is put in an ad out, please. Um, looking for this type of character for this role, you know, this is what we need. Please send me a reel and a resume headshot to this email address. And that's another way of doing it. That's a, that's a way of saving time as well. You know, let them just send them, send their information to you. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas. With this, we have come to the end of the show today. It's been so fascinating to talk to you about this profession. You know, I personally didn't know, you know, many things about the casting for cinema and television. So you have enriched me as well. I'm sure your talk and your, your conversation has enriched the audience as well. And I'm so thankful to you. You know, so you joined so late. It, it's like, you no know, one o'clock in night in USA now, though it's morning in India. But you yeah. know, you, you took so much of pain for joining us today. It, it's really wonderful uh, listening to you today. And, and we are fortunate to have a person like, you know, Thomas Sullivan today on the show, who has been the casting director of such a great film, Green uh, Book, which has won Oscar uh, award all, as well that he sort of, you know, talked about this profession today in such a detail. And I'm sure, you know, uh, the, the tips given by you for the, you know, young casting directors will be very, very useful in, in their career. I, I really thank you from bottom of my heart today for joining us so late from USA today. It's been fascinating to, uh, talking to you today. Thank you so much, Suleiman, for joining us. Oh, hey, you're welcome. It was, it was my pleasure. I, I hope, uh, uh, so, you know, my knowledge helped, you know, at least one of you, you know, <laughs> I hope it, hope, it, hope it guided you somehow, you know. Happy to share it. So it's my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. All of us, we enjoyed the talk today. Uh, that's it for today, uh, audience in this show. Uh, I think we'll be back on next Saturday uh, with yet another uh, media veterans. So keep watching uh, at the Facebook of IMC Manu uh, uh, YouTube channel as well. On, on both Facebook and YouTube, we are posting the uh, all videos and details about this series. So that's it for today. Uh, please take good care of you. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.